Why Georgia? I mean, because it's a pretty extraordinary story. Yeah, except, I mean, when you consider, uh, we've had a, a, a long pedigree of, of production and storytelling in Georgia through Turner Studios and its subsidiaries and, and really kind of a vibrant independent scene for years. Georgia nicknamed 2017 as the year of film, and Georgia has 9.5 billion reasons to prove it. Georgia laid on the gas and kept its pedal to the metal. As a result, the numbers show Georgia's economic impact from the film industry. One episode went from Greenland to Belgium, back to L.A. But Atlanta. And the whole time we're in Atlanta. <laughs> the host city of Super Bowl 53 is also known as the Hollywood of the South. I never freeze. In 2018, movies filmed in the area dominated the box office. Parts of Black Panther, Avengers, and Atlanta, a filmmaker's paradise, the Hollywood of the East Coast, a perfect place for film students. The industry is booming and opportunity is everywhere. Oglethorpe University is a well-known liberal arts school, but it is lacking one key form of art, film. I'm Alan Lowell. I am studio, my main job is studio art professor. I've been here a long time, so I'm also the division chair. And it's a complicated, very long story. The administration has wanted something called a film major, but often they don't really know what they're talking about, which is one thing. But then the other thing is they wanted it without actually investing any money and resources. Uh, you know, it's a little bit off, it's tilted, it's been damaged, so I gotta stick a wallet in there. Before this past year, we had this room was completely empty. All that was in here was those cardboard boxes there in the corner. Here we have a uh, dumpster divin for these boxes. We got, the, we got this crate out of the trash, actually. We got this cart out of the trash, and we repurposed it into a grip cart, film cart. Um, and we store a lot of our power cables in there. It was part of an older pattern that they've done in other departments where they wanted to take courses that already exist and say we have a major. And matter of fact, they've been doing it. I think some students have come here having been told we already had a major, and we didn't. We had a long time um, film and video instructor, David Patterson, who was great. He had done everything in the industry. I'd met him through friends of mine from college who are in the movie industry. And he died abruptly, unexpectedly. And um, it created, it, it sort of precipitated a crisis of, do we just shut the whole thing down? The problem with staffing anything like this is, you, you in my view, we need someone who's an industry professional who's had a lot of experience. I've been involved with film over 30 years um, now. I uh, haven't always been like in the industry, but I've always been surrounded by people that are in the industry um, and around you know, the evolution. That was the first thing I saw, was how many students already in art, studio art, wanted to focus on some kind of combination of um, filmmaking, video, and um, photography in particular. What makes it a little bit different is actually the lack of um, equipment. And sometimes when you have it all, then you don't know how it feels like to deal with that. And I've done, what, I've done that. I've been in a place before, and I think that that's what has helped me get through this lack of equipment. I've been in a place where we didn't have a lot, so we had to kind of create and do. And so it's helped me actually be in a position to offer that type of advice and that type of creativity to the students here. Um, because when they get out there and they finally get to where they have the really good stuff, it's gonna be amazing for them. Um, after you know, creating this and, and I think that it puts them somewhat in a better position because they're able when they're looking to jobs say hey I did this with the bare minimum imagine what I could do if I had a whole bunch of stuff so 
That's where I think the creativity helps the students a lot more, is that they're able to get in there and kind of say, hey, just because I don't have this doesn't mean I can't shoot it. I just have to find a way. So basically for a number of years, I've been pressuring them to give us better space, space at all, permanent space, where equipment could be left set up. And that's been the first thing I've asked for, was improve space. I think they have finally turned a corner that you can't have this very uh, tech, technologically, uh, you have to have equipment to do this. Well, when I first got here and um, I said, well, what do we have? Uh, and all that was in the closet was an empty box um, that hadn't even been used yet. So, uh, welcome to Oglethorpe's uh, film equipment closet. This is about all we got at the moment. Um, just speaking on lack of resources, this has been uh, occurring over the last year. Our professor actually got these from a uh, like secondhand hand-me-down sort of sale. Um, they, the uh, cables were actually uh, stripped down and cut up, so we had to actually repair them. So we did not the originals, we repair those. Uh, we got stacks and stacks and stacks of uh, gaff tape that we um, got a donation from. Uh, we actually, here's a receipt from Dollar Store. Uh, so what is going on with that is we bought a bunch of materials um, to create on the sewing machine. We actually created our own sandbags. So these are not the normal sandbags you'd buy in the store. Uh, these are handcrafted, if you will, uh, taken with some plastic bags of sand, play sand, and this is actually just a dollar pencil case you get at the dollar store. And that's a sandbag. So these gloves up here are also <laughs> for handling lights. Um, so they're just normal oven mitts. You can um, grab a light bulb with that if you need. Um, so that's what we're working with. Not very pro professional per se, but they do work. Um, this is another dumpster dive find. So this is a little hard case that we found outside. It's got a bunch of these little plastic sheets in them that we can use for backdrops and whatnot. But this is also from the garbage um, back here. This is all uh, film club stuff. Um, so within this past year, We've taken budgets from SGA and Film Club to create um, a sort of assortment of equipment. So going through, I know it's extremely disorganized at the moment and messy, but this is just kind of what we had to work with. Uh, we got two of these Tascam audio recorders. Um, you can uh, you can see it's a property of Film Club right there. Um, so what these do is you put in an SD card here in the side and you can basically uh, record audio from that. Uh, these were about a hundred bucks a piece. They work and do what they're supposed to do, but definitely not where we need to be industry standard wise. Uh, we have two of these Rode shotgun microphones so that uh, we can connect those to the device to record with. These are semi industry standard. These work very well. We've got two of these cameras. Uh, I just purchased these this semester. Um, these are the Canon T6i's with uh, 18 to 135 lenses. These are amazing. These are just DSLR cameras. Uh, they do what they need to. Uh, the, the lens zoom is incredible on them. Uh, they're very good at making short films and videos, anything like that. Um, but this is what we're working with. It's just these DSLR cameras. Um, we got a couple of SD cards to go along with it so that we can actually film. Um, we do have more cameras back here. These are pretty much the same thing just from the, le the previous semester. But these are the step down. These are the Canon T5i's. We got two of these. Um, uh, we got an assortment of battery chargers throughout here so that we can track, keep track of what's charged and what's not. And then the Piece de resistance is our Ronin gimbal. So we have one of these Ronin gimbals that I actually ordered through Film Club. Uh, this is one of the greatest pieces of gear that we have. Um, it's got a monitor up top here so you can actually connect a camera and stabilize it and move it around um, 
freehand, very steady, very stable. The school needs more of these for uh, the use of the class. So basically, everything here is for the after class activity club. So the club is not run through the department at all. The club is run through mainly the students, and this is Without this stuff, everything in this corner would not be here if it wasn't for the students. So the only thing the school would actually have ownership of is this equipment over here, the lights, and so on. So if it wasn't for film club, we would have no cameras, we would have no audio equipment, nothing like that. In order for this major to go through and for the major to work, we need more resources than just what we have. You know, we built this up from, this room was literally empty, there was nothing in here in the beginning. But now this is what we've built it up to, um, and I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen. It's not that we needed the latest and greatest things, but there's no way that someone can actually learn unless if that's present. Because I'm not going to go into the real world. Like, these cameras are phenomenal. I love these things. These are great. But you're not going to go to a professional film shoot and use this to film a movie with. It's just not going to happen. These will get the job done, and it's definitely like use what you have kind of deal. Um, and we definitely do. We're very grateful to have these, but I'm not going to show up to a film shoot and film with that. Uh, they're going to be using the Ari Alexas, the red cameras, things like that nature um, that we just don't have. And it's going to be a long, uh, steady process to get us there. And I definitely, I'm confident that we will get there someday. We have a major has been proposed. It's a interdisciplinary, that was a long answer. It was, it's an interdisciplinary combination of um, new many new courses and then courses that are already in art, which would be video production, documentary, um, I think either cinematography or film directing, and then experimental video for artists. So there's four courses that are in that, but then the other courses are new and it'll be a freestanding major called filmmaking and film studies, I believe. No. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, being patient because it is, it's going to take us a little bit of time. Uh, but we're in a good spot, I think. Right now, I feel that it's up to students to speak up because I've been fighting with that for five or more years. I'm wearing Peaks. Uh, I study business administration and I also study film. So this is just a new thing I'm trying. It's not what I've been interested in. So I'm hoping that we can at least have like more space to do things. I feel like the editing lab is really nice, but I feel like we need more space to shoot, need more space to like learn sound and lighting. And also I want more classes to open up more specific to those different types of techniques. I would say mainly like, I mean, most people, most people have their own cameras, but I mean, for those students who don't have their own cameras, it's really hard for them to get a camera because there's only really two or three cameras. I really fell in love with film like these past two semesters here. It's just really my whole freshman year. I, like what film really means to me, it's creating your own vision. I think like whenever somebody makes something or records something, they're recording what they see and that they're recording their own perception on that. So that's something I definitely can see myself doing for the rest of my life. I was very intrigued coming in. Um, Cause coming from high school, I took video production, film production all throughout my four years and we had all this amazing equipment. Uh, we had a green screen studio, we had DSLR cameras, we had cinema cameras, we had Ronin gimbals. Um, we had a lot of stuff, so I was expecting a lot coming in. So when I got here, it was slightly, actually not slightly, very underwhelming. All of our cameras and equipment that we had coming in was all owned by the professor at the time, Dr. Patterson. Um, he brought all of his equipment in, he brought in cameras, tripods, sound equipment, and that's what we used to practice on and that's what we used to learn on. And those pieces of equipment were up to standard, but it's kind of unfair that a school expects a professor to use their own personal equipment to teach their students with. If you do what you've always done, you will get what you've always got. Students have hope for the future, but there's a lot to be done. This, this is just the beginning.